Sister Viewing for the homegoing service of Sister Frankie May Smith, Max Smith, amen. At this time, you can come and view and speak with the family at this time until the service starts at 12 o'clock. And that's the musicians to face off with them.
Amen. This is going to start the celebration service for Miss Frankie M. Smith. Come on, this is a celebration. Come on, give God some praise. We can do the same. We can still give God praise. He does not make a mistake. But we still are going to learn to give God the praise. We still give God the honor. Through the blood that she laid, hallelujah, we can
Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, let's get it on. 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 Let's
Frankie is going to be dearly missed. Because she always had that little smile on her face. I'll never forget it when I first met her as teenagers. <laughs> we was teenagers. And you know that's been some years ago, because I'm 75 years old now. So you know that's been a long time ago. But anyway, she's going to dearly be missed. But I just want to say this and then I'm going to pray. Don't feel bad because she's an overcomer. The Bible says he did overcome it. I will grant for him to sit with me in my father's kingdom. So she's an overcomer. She overcame this world and gave in to the new world. But we all got to go one day. We got to be prepared to go, all of us. Most precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you see the loved ones and the family members and all friends, God, you see us all here today, God, and hearts are broken and torn apart, God, but God, you is a man, man. And God, bless that you touch each and every one of us that's in here today, God, especially the children, God, and the grands, and the great grands. Touch them, God. Lord, you have the power to touch them. Let them know, God, that you're in control. Have mercy upon us all in this building on today, God. Have your way in our life. Guide them, God. In the days that come when mama and grandmother is not there, God, comfort them. Let them know, God, that you is God and you're able to do anything but fail. Let them know, God, that you walk with us as we walk. That we call upon your name and give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor that you be there for us, God. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being a part of this celebration. We thank you for the family that's sick here today, God. We thank you for the time, the good times, the bad times, God. We thank you for them, God. Lord, use God and you be able to do anything but fail, God. Lord, we get ready to move out the way, God, and allow the other ones to come and speak. God bless that you be with us, that you strengthen us, especially the family. The immediate family, God, the ones that don't understand, God, give them an understanding. Yes. Touch their hearts and their minds, God. Yes. Father, this we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 We thank Bishop Johnson for that prayer. Confident. At this time, we have another selection coming from Sister Paula Johnson. Thank you, Sister
please, yes ma'am and no ma'am, you wasn't getting your food and I frankly didn't move from that window till you said that, honey, Paula, no, they had worked. <laughs> Paula wasn't backing down. But she did, she got her food because she told me, I'm gonna make you thank you. But we just thank God for her, Frankie. I mean, that's not around the church and, you know, and everything and just working and you go to her house, you made the best lemonade, you know. I don't know if you girls know how to make it, or Charles, if you know how to make it too. So if I come home, I gotta have some of that lemonade, you know what I'm saying? She always kept that lemonade in there. She, she really did have some good lemonade. And she would truly be missed. We're gonna miss her truly, but we know that God has a better plan for her right now. And we thank God for that. We thank God for you all. We thank God for the whole family as a whole at this time. So if there are no other reflections, we're gonna go into the acknowledgements. And we're going to try to read through these briefly. There were quite a few. Praying for you and your loss. Uh, praying Beneva in, I, I can't read the right in that. I'm, sure, I'm sorry. Beneva. With sympathy in the loss of your loved one. From the Townsend and the Mack family. The ones we love shine for us in the stars, in the glow of the moon, in the sun each time it rises. Aunt Vivian and Patricia, Patricia, I'm sorry, Patrice Herndon. A little something about my grandmother Frankie Smith. She was so loving and caring and would do anything in her power to make sure you were okay. She took care of me and my other grandkids as if we were her own, her little ducklings. She would be deeply missed by all of us. She has left us with many memories and a life lesson that we would carry on with us for the rest of our lives. Images flood my mind of her beautiful smile and the touch of her healing hugs. I can still hear her calling me molasses, telling me to hurry up and stop moving so slow. We love her with every fiber of our being and know that she is still here with us, and she would never leave our side. May she and my grandpa be together in peace. Courtney Carter. May faith give you strength. Many pra may prayers bring you comfort from God's house of deliverance. As there are memories, love lives on. God knows all things, so I pray for your strength during this loss of your loved one. Love conquers all things, Minister Mario McCall and family. Remembering with love, when the heart is grieving, God comes near to bring his comfort to catch every tear. To the family, from Sister Peggy Martin and family. With love in our hearts, we release them into the arms of heaven. Sister Linda Bethay and family. Our hearts go out to you today. Bishop Oscar Johnson, Mother Nancy Johnson in God's House of Deliverance Church. There is so little one can say, so little one can do when you have lost a loved one who was very dear to you. Sister Berlin Johnson. We're so sorry for your loss. God's House of Deliverance Missionary Department. Comfort, strength, hope. Pastor Rodney Stewart in Restoration and Deliverance Ministries, the obituary. Frankie Mae Smith was born to parents Alma Ole, Oletta Mack and Franklin Mack on January 13, 1953 in Greensboro, North Carolina. Frankie was the third oldest of eight children. Frankie was preceded in death by her parents, her husband, Jimmy L. Smith, her stepson, Orlando Chisholm, her grandson, Blessed Charles Parker, aunts, uncles, nieces, and nephews. Frankie attended Ben L. Smith High School and Gifford Technical Community College. She worked many years in early childhood education and many years at Gifford Medical Supply as a certified fiddler. After retirement, she helped take care of her grandchildren and continued to work in the yard with her plants and flowers. Frankie was a loving mother, wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, and aunt. She loved being outside working in her yard, fishing with her husband, and cooking on the grill. 
She taught her grandchildren how to cook, garden, and take care of plants. Frankie is survived by her five children, Angela Mack of Greensboro, North Carolina, Penny Williamson of Greensboro, North Carolina, Charles Williamson of Greensboro, North Carolina, Alicia Smith Kennard of Climax, North Carolina, and Quentin Williamson of Greensboro, North Carolina. She also leaves behind 24 grandchildren, 15 great-grandchildren, six sisters, one brother, and a host of nieces and nephews. I know. I know this hurts. Don't, but don't cry for me. There are only two things promised, and now I'm free. I will take everything gained as a blessing in between, from being a daughter to a great-grandmother filled with memories. The love I gain will be forever precious, you see. I know this hurts, but don't cry for me. Please understand there is pain no more. I'm reunited with those, with those loved ones waiting for me. If I could choose, I would have stayed forever. But I'm at peace knowing that one day we'll be together. So for this moment, my father needed me home. Soon you'll understand that I'm never gone. I will always be with you as you step into a new chapter. My love for you would never end as it, for, as it is forever and after. I know this hurts, but don't cry for me. Remember that family is important in all things I have taught you. Hold each other together as you heal place no, as you hold, hold each other together as you heal place no blame. As you all carry on my legacy and remember my name. For now, this is to see you later. Smile about me as I know this is hard. And I know this hurts, but don't cry for me. Poem by Keisha Mack. At this time, we will have a selection coming from God's House of Deliverance Mail Chorus.
a 10, a man, those that might have been out of town, we tell you, hello, we thank you for watching on today. Amen. We're not going to be long. Amen. We will not be long. Amen. But we do have a short word for you, and we want to bring this word to you. First of all, we give honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who's first in our life. We give honor to all the pulpit that are in this place on today. Give honor to Bishop Johnson. Give honor to those that are over this house on today. Thank you for allowing us to be here and to use it. We thank the Lord for that. Amen. I'm going to say a short prayer. I'm going to get right into the word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for being good to us, watching over us, keeping us, leading us, guiding us all through the night, all through this day, whatever we have to go through us, sharing your love with us, letting us know that you're right there with us, Lord. Hallelujah. You're holding us down, Lord. You're keeping us on track, Lord. And we say thank you for that. We love you on today. We thank you for our relatives, our friends that are gathering on today. We ask that you be with them over the days to come, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you open up my heart, my mind, to the words that you've given me, that I can give these words to others on today, Lord. We thank you for all you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Sisters. Sister. Amen. What's my sister, y'all? Sister. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You know, when I was asked to uh, do this, it wasn't a hard thing for me to do. Somebody said, well, you're not going to be able to do it. That's your sister. We have a work to do when it comes to working in the church. We have a job that we have to do. We have to be strong for the things that God has placed before us because you never know when you're going to be called to be used at. So you've got to be ready. Amen. So I said, Lord, you just have to strengthen me and carry me through this. And I know he's been doing that, amen, from the time that I, he's not just starting to do it, from the time that I began to know that she was sick, He's been, he's been strengthening me and how, you know, he's just been making me stronger and stronger and stronger. And I know he's been doing the same thing for you. But when I began to think about the word sisters, and I went to the dictionary strongs, it said that it was a general term for any near female relative, including a stepsister or half-sister. And so I know She's none of that. She's my sister. Amen. So I didn't have to worry about that. So I knew what I was getting into. But I just want to let you know that she is, was not the only sister because in this family that we have, <laughs> I ain't talking about just the math thing, but it looked like in my whole, everybody had big families. My mother had eight children, seven girls, one boy, seven girls, one boy. I said, look back sometimes at him. I said, how in the world did he make it through all the women in that house? But he was always strong. He didn't let us bully him. He didn't let us tell him what to do. He still don't. Amen. He didn't do that. Amen. But it was seven girls. Amen. So when uh, Frankie came along, uh, she was the third. Sister Alma first, me second and then Frankie. So, we had to learn to do things, help one another. Because my mother worked, so she wasn't there sometimes, so we had to step in as mothers. And what we did, we had to sometimes do their hair. We had to do Paulette's hair, Claudette's hair. We had to cook breakfast for them, get them ready for school, be there for them when they got home. We had to do all of that stuff. Because we were the oldest, but we had to do it. Especially before the other ones came in. But when it was just us three, we had to do that. So we got used to doing it. That's why it's no problem for me, me raising my children, because I was used to being a mom back then. So I was used to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the Lord gave me a scripture that I wanted to use on today. And it's coming from the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew, the 12th chapter, 
St. Matthew, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to read, starting at the 46th verse, down through the 50th. It says, while he yet talked to the people, y'all have to, my eyes are a little bad, to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, your mother and your brethren stand without, desiring to speak with you. But he answered and said unto him, who told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples, and said, Behold my mother and my brother. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister, and my mother. Amen. So I said, Lord, I thank you for that word. Amen. As I began to study and to read, I read in the Proverbs 7 and 4, and I have heard my son say this to me a lot, but I read in Proverbs 7 and 4, it tells us that we are to say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. Wisdom here is personified or shown as a woman or a sister, and understanding as thy kinswoman. Those are the older ones that have wisdom or have been through some things. The Word of God tells us that we are to get an understanding if you don't understand something. And if you don't know, you need to ask somebody. Amen. In the 49th verse, Jesus stretched out his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brother. Even though at that time he was referring to his original 12 disciples. We know that in this day and time, he wasn't only talking to them, but it refers to any and all that follow him. Then he said, Behold my mother and my brother. I want you to know, Sister Franklin, let me back up just a little bit here. Our mother, that would be an our kinswoman, our mother, when we were first born, see, I told you she had seven girls, so she started out trying to make our names rhyme. Right. And I'm a baby. Nancy K. Frankie May. Frankie Marie Ray. She called our whole name there. And then she had the mother when she ran out of rhyming names. So she just started naming them. But they were beautiful names. Marianne, Paulette, Claudia, Shirley. Beautiful names. So it was, it was just that she would always call us by our whole name. A lot of people don't like to be called by their whole name. But she was our kids' woman. She taught us things. She taught, just like Sister Frankie taught her children to do things, our mother taught us to do things too. But neither of those are there now uh, or here now. So I'm speaking to you that are here. That's why I want you to know that the words I'm saying to you today, they are directed to he, uh, you. So you can look at yourself as being the brother, sister, auntie, cousin, friend, whichever. Whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. We are now, we ain't talking about just these things right here on earth. I'm talking about this heavenly relationship that we're looking forward to. This relationship when one day we'll be able to meet our Heavenly Father. And as we are gathered here, it's the time to remind all my sisters, my brothers, my cousins, my friends, whoever might be here, that we've got to do the will of our Father in heaven if we want to be able to connect one day with our Heavenly Father. The will of my Father, which is in heaven, this is God's desire and wish for his people. Our Father will, our Father's will is that those who believe on the Son Jesus will have eternal life and that none 
will be lost. You're looking for that day. I'm looking for that time. So I'm working so hard to make it in. The disciples of Jesus were taught to pray for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's in Matthew 6 and 10, if anybody wants to go back and look it up. Paul urged the Christians at Rome to allow God to transform their minds, making a change in their mind, so that they would know the perfect will of God. And to be not conformed to this world, doing the things that this world is doing. In order, it looks like, and people might say, in order to be a part of this world, you gotta do what they do. If they're drinking, you gotta drink. If they're smoking, you gotta smoke. If they're shooting, you gotta shoot. Whatever the world is doing, you gotta do it. But I beg the difference. We don't have to do that. We can do what our Lord and our Savior has given us to do. But you gotta be transformed. You gotta be changed by the renewing of your mind. You gotta change your mind to want to do those things. We must start thinking spiritually, which means all things are given to us through the cross of Jesus, our, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given his life for us. And this is gotten by faith and not by works, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Amen. You see, a change is going to come when the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. It attempts to come in. It tries to make that change. But a lot of times we just won't let it. We got to learn to be weary or uh, uh, wanting and listening to what the Spirit is trying to say to us. It can only be obtained by making the cross the object of our face. And when I say cross, I'm talking about Jesus. Making Jesus the object of our faith. In order to do this, we need to, uh, you have to have that uh, same love as the one that gave his life for us. It takes love, y'all. And this family has a lot of love in it. Love. I, I, over these last days, these last weeks, I've seen the love. I've seen the, the, how they're coming together. Even though mother's not here now, the family, they're gathering together. Love. That the older one stepping in, trying to take that, not take that place, but be there to show you the way. Something you didn't know how to do? Come on, I can show you how to do it. Something you need to learn how to do? Come on, I can show you how to do it. If I don't know how to do it, I'm sure somebody in this great big group of people can tell you or show you how to do it. Somebody can. But the thing about it, you can't disassociate yourself from your family. We are a family. So we got to stay together. Stay together. Love one another. Love is what holds us together. Not just that lip kind of love, but that agape love. That kind of love that shows God. That kind of love that lets us know that God still loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. And if he gave his only begotten son and he loved him that much, can we not show love while we are still here on earth? He gave his only begotten son for us. And though we are undeserving, we weren't deserving of it. We still aren't. We never, nothing, we are never deserving of the love that God has to give to us. But we have to want his love. We want to have to want to go back with him. We have to want to be in that place where one day we'll be able to meet our loved ones. We'll be able to meet our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Agape is an act of the will of God rather than emotions. Amen. Agape love shows that we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shows that we are disciples. We are people that belong to him. Amen. I want to let you know, and I'm through, y'all. I told you, I didn't have no message. I want to let you know that the doors of the church, my church, and I know there are many other churches that are open. If you don't have a church, find yourself a good church. Give God some time. Don't just go week from week and day to day, never telling the Lord thank you for anything. He's, he's, a, he's a good God. God wants your, uh, your will to be swallowed up by his will. And most fulfilling, you can do that. 
All you have got to do is open up your heart, give your heart. We, we, we know how to do it. We've been in this thing a long time, most of us. We know we got to come back to the place where we, we used to be there. When we were little children, my mother brought us up in the church. She taught us. Sometimes I'll get there and I'll start singing them old songs. They said, where do you learn that from? My mama taught me that song. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. She, she, she learned them old Negro songs. And she teach us those songs. <laughs> yes, she did. I think I'm the only one that remember them, though. <laughs> the they were looking at me, where you get that music? That song from Mama told me. <laughs> but remember what your kids, woman, the ones that have gone on before you, the ones that are here for you, what they can do for you. We are here to help you. The older ones that are still here, we are here for you. We're still family. We will always be family, no matter what. That doesn't stop. We love you. We thank you. We thank everyone that's here. We thank the ones that are listening. We thank the ones that maybe could not get in the building. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the love that you show our sister Frankie during her time of sickness. As Bishop has said, she was a person that believed in doing that smell. Sister Nancy touched you. She didn't believe in you touching nothing in her kitchen. Christmas, I like when you have Christmas. I come by there, she had to give me nothing for Christmas. She said, she said, I got some, I got some, I wouldn't make some little cakes. She wouldn't, she was gonna give me a whole lot because you know I love sweets. <laughs> she counted me out a few. Gave me a few. I said, okay. <laughs> You don't need that anyway. <laughs> you know I love stuff like that. But she didn't let you touch her stuff. You left her stuff alone. But you know, I think her for being like that, maybe it has taught some of her children to be like that and to discipline their families like that. We want you to continue to have love in your heart for the family. Continue to have love in your hearts for the older ones that are here. We're still here for you. And nothing has changed. We're still here. My telephone, I got a number. Been had it for 30, 40 years. It was so old that the telephone company didn't want to do it anymore. I had to put it on the cell phone so I could keep that number. Bishop said, well, we've been having this number. We're going to keep this number. Somebody might want to call on. So that number ain't changed. Then I got another number. It ain't changed. So if you ever need to talk, you ever need to call, you know how to get in touch. And if you don't have it, I'm sure some of the other ones do. We love you. We thank you for being here. We'll forever be praying for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, let's get on. We have return to the public service over to the hands of God. For the funeral director in charge at this time. Just as they are coming, just remember the repast following the barrel and committal be at 917 Ash Street in Greensboro, North Carolina. The intimate will be at Proximity Mills Cemetery.
if you 